Hello. In this brief presentation, we're going to discuss real versus virtual control systems and demonstrate the Tyback Simulation Bulk Configurator. This schematic shows the components of an actual distributed control system. It consists of operator and engineering workstations, a control communications network, control processors, and field bus I.O. modules. The control system sends and receives signals to and from the plant process equipment, sensors, and actuators. By contrast, the virtual control system eliminates the need for real hardware and simulates the plant process by using a model. Multiple controllers and I.O. modules all run on the simulation platform and a virtual marshalling cabinet links control I.O. points to points inside the process model. The resulting simulation platform can be as simple as a single desktop or laptop or can be staged in a factory setting. Tieback simulation gets its name from fully staged hardware testing. In this example, a simple flow control loop can be tested in the factory by taking a wire from the controller output and looping it back to the controller input. Thus, when the output moves, the feedback responds and demonstrates that the loop is tied off. We can accomplish the same testing, without hardware, by using the virtual control system connected to a simplified plant model. Next, we'll show how to build the model using the Tyback Simulation Bulk Configurator. We'll start with a blank model, as illustrated by this schematic. Here, we're looking at the cross-reference table, which you'll recall we said is like a virtual I.O. cabinet, as shown in the drawing. To build the model, we'll use the tag names in the cross-reference table to figure out what kind of loop needs to be simulated. To do this automatically, we'll use the rulebook feature of the Tyback Simulation Bulk Configurator. The Tyback Simulation Bulk Configurator is an Excel application that has a tab for the cross-reference table and for the model. Here the model is blank. The rulebook searches the I.O. tags for patterns and builds a tieback model based on the pattern that's found. For instance, the tag FY denotes a flow control valve and FT denotes a flow transmitter. From this we know we can build a flow tieback model. When the rulebook is invoked, it searches the cross-reference table for every I.O. tag and where a match is found, an entry is made shown here in pink and blue. It also creates an entry in the Model tab. We proceed from here by importing the completed model and cross-reference table back into the simulation. Now we see that we have a completed model which can be loaded and tested. The rulebook we used had entries to create tieback models for motor start-stop logic and flow control. Here we demonstrate the proper functioning of the motor by pressing the start button which sends a command to, out to the model which then loops back to the motor running status input. Therefore we can test that the interlocks on the motor are satisfied. Likewise we can test that the flow control loop works by bringing up the controller faceplate, placing the controller in manual, increasing the output, and watching the flow transmitter feedback change in response to the change in output. Tieback simulation has advantages and disadvantages. It's good for single loop testing. It's very quick and easy to bulk configure. It can be used as an operator orientation tool and an instrumentation and control testbed. The disadvantages are that the simulated loops don't interact because the model isn't based on a physical process. Only the most basic operating procedures can be taught, and if you wish to do better, you should pick a medium or high fidelity simulation model, which we'll talk about in a future video. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like more information, please contact me at the information here.